Welcome back to the final Electric Avenue Record Store Day video for 2022. Um, for the April Record Store Day, remember there's another one, June 18th, which now has about 100 titles pushed to that date. Um, so there's still over 300 on this one, but uh, I think the June one is going to be worth checking out because there's a lot of stuff, and I'll talk more about that as we get closer. I'll also try to post a list of things that were bumped on Facebook so you guys have a general idea of what you're not going to see when you show up on Saturday, um, if you haven't seen most of that stuff already. So, uh, but most of the things are are going to appear on this one. Um, so Saturday, 8 a.m., we open uh, organized line, probably... I'll probably still limit the number of people in here at any given time. Um, I think masking... Uh, well, it's tough to say. Philadelphia is um, mandating, and I'm hoping that I can keep the door open because it's supposed to be very nice. So that will probably be an optional thing, although I will be wearing a mask. Just uh, Well, as a store owner who's the only person here most of the time... Um, you know, you just uh, are sort of like cautious of you don't want your store to close. And if I get sick, the whole thing goes down. So it's not really worth it to me to put that kind of risk out there. I think it's such a small gesture anyway, but that's just me. Um, okay, just to keep everyone good. So, um, all right, let me get started. This is not going to take very long. I don't want to take too much of your time. I've already taken almost two minutes. So here we go, Everly Brothers, and this is uh, these are just sort of highlights. Again, I can't show everything. There's just too many things. Um, this is a collection on blue vinyl, 7,500 copies. Warner Brothers did this. Um, you know, we lost another Everly this year, and uh, it's got When Will I Be Loved, Walk Right Back, uh, Kathy's Clown, um, Even I Walk the Line. Um, so it's kind of a nice collector's piece for Everly fans. Ben Vaughn, popular guy on, uh, radio, internet radio. Um, if you, he says a lot of people might know him from records back in the nineties, but, uh, he's still making records and, uh, side two starts with New Jersey rock and roll. And there's also a song called Wayne Fontana was wrong. Um, so anyway, you might want to check that out if you have a, uh, interest in Ben. Um, let's see, Satan's Pilgrims live at Jackpot Records. Well, that sort of gets things off to a crazy start, right? Uh, I think this is fairly sought after, limited of 1500 and, uh, this is recorded live in 1999 on a mono cassette recorder, um, includes postcard of the show flyers for the performance on colored vinyl. Yeah, so, um, don't really know what else to say about that. And you will know us by the Trail of Dead. They have a couple re releases coming out. This one's called The Century of, Century of Self. Um, great cover art. Uh, yeah, and it's kind of heavyweight, too. This is, uh, limited color vinyl. Um, they, yeah, they have a couple pieces coming. Jazz Sabbath, Volume 2. Um, Wish I'd gotten more of these. I only have a few. Uh, limited mono edition, translucent natural vinyl, and a bonus track. Uh, bonus disc as well. Um, this includes Paranoid Black Sabbath. These are jazz versions of Black Sabbath songs, supposedly by somebody in Ozzy's band. And uh, they are kind of, they've created their own sort of fake history narrative. Um, so it's kind of fun. And the first one was really popular. Dave Davies kinked. Well, if you like the kinks, and this is a Black Friday, was supposed to be a Black Friday piece on pink and blue, pink and blue vinyl. Uh, first time on vinyl. Um, it's sort of a collection, I believe, of some of his uh, solo stuff that's maybe been hard to get. <coughs> Excuse me. Lou Reed and Chris Christofferson live at the bottom line. This was from from the 90s actually um yeah in their own words 1994 i mean they're both great performers obviously this is kind of a 
an odd mixture to me of people, but you know, they're both sort of American storytellers, so maybe not. Um, it's kind of a big, big piece, but uh, yeah, some of these things, like the last couple videos, I showed a lot of things that I received like numerous copies of. These I only have, you know, a few here and there, but um, so anyway, but they are things, and there's a ton of stuff that I got that I'm just not going to show because I only got like ones or twos of them. So uh, the wipers over the edge, um, their last one, uh, they had another record store day one last year. This is the anniversary edition double LP featuring bonus side of rare mixes, outtakes, and more from the sessions, color, vinyl, unreleased photos, remastered from original master tapes, whatever that means. It's a very... <clears throat> ambiguous term. Portraits of Her. This is a compilation featuring a lot of female artists. Um, sort of been talked up because the first song is Taylor Swift's The Man. A lot of people are kind of sleeping on this because they're so focused on the Lakes 7-inch. Uh, also has Kay Flay, Julia Michaels, Laura Jane Grace, Banks, Julian Baker, uh, Princess Nokia, and uh, Girl in Red. So, I don't know. Might be of interest to some people. Anytime Taylor's involved. Break-in soundtrack. Very cool, very cool. Great movie, fun soundtrack. Uh, this is on uh, Coke Bottle Clear Vinyl. Uh, Camera Obscura. Um, so this is an album that's basically a roundup of a lot of the stuff that did not make it to their other albums. And... Um, I wish I could remember her name right now. I should have done my research. I think Carrie, um, the keyboard player, passed away. Uh, she had cancer, a very young age. And the band has sort of gone into permanent hiatus since then. So this is kind of another way of rounding up some of her work and honoring her contributions to that band. They're a great band. Uh, Del Shannon. Um, so this is sort of an older or more mature looking Del than what we're used to. And that's because this was an album he did in 1991. And it was his last album recorded with Tom Petty and Mike Campbell, produced by Jeff Lynne. So you kind of have a situation of where we headed towards a Wilburys kind of situation there, probably. And then uh, that's really all that happened and then Dell passed away. So, um, yeah. Bob Stinson of The Replacements on this Bleeding Hearts record. Uh, Riches to Rags. This is from 1983. Some unreleased uh, Bob on guitar. Or not unreleased, but I would say it's been a long time since it was out. Um, Betty Harris. This looks awesome. This is uh, Lost Queen of New Orleans Soul. It's pressed on uh, limited green vinyl. 17 songs written and produced by Alan Toussaint and features The Meters, uh, recorded in New Orleans, 1964 to 69. Um, that might be of note. The Doctor Who soundtrack, uh, let's see, this one is the Dead Air one with James Goss. Uh, an original audio adventure read by David Tennant. Um, yeah, so read by the 10th Doctor. Uh, Sound Waves Green Vinyl. Beware the Hush. Um, this one is actually listed as an import from the UK. Uh, let's see. Oh no, it's Devo on Picture Disc. Um, this is sort of the time that Devo kind of, um, I don't know, became a little bit like maybe commercial for some people, I guess. I mean, this one features That's Good and Peekaboo. Um, 1982. So still they were, you know, pretty popular at that point. Not like they're not popular now. They're still popular now, in a way. Uh, Buena Vista Social Club. This is a four-track EP of stuff that wasn't uh, on the albums, I believe. Uh, produced by Ry Cooter. Uh, speaking of which, there is a new uh, Taj Mahal and Ry Cooter uh, joint album coming out uh, the day before Record Store Day. So that will probably be in the shop as well. Uh, Tegan and Sarah's So Jealous, Still Jealous, sorry. This is the uh, album Still still Jealous. Um, it's really, well, the reason it's called Still Jealous is it's So Jealous, 
remixed and reimagined. Um, I don't know how much remixed or by who. It doesn't really say. Tegan covers Sarah's song. Sarah covers Tegan's songs. That must be why. I'm not sure. Has that been out before? Maybe someone can tell me. I feel like I missed that somehow, somewhere. Uh, Larry Coriel's Fairyland. Um, let's see. This is a 1971 record from Larry. Um, Montreux Jazz Festival, Switzerland. Marbled pink and white vinyl. You can sort of see there. Um, Culture Factory. They do a lot of these kind of reissues, but it's cool. They're sometimes harder to find albums. So, Coolio. Yo, it takes a thief. Um, this is Coolio's debut, I believe. Fantastic Voyage. Um, I think I might have mentioned this. I don't know. Can of Corn. Um, yeah. Well, it was his debut. It was a popular record. So, um, Juice Priest. Well, this is like another greatest hits type thing, but it's greatest hits of the early years. So you're probably not going to find, you know, anything from Number of the Beast on here or whatever. But um, it's still cool. It's like a cool cover embossed. And uh, it's got the Rockarola stuff. Um, red and blue vinyl. So. Uh, Yorma Kalkonen. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Jefferson Airplane Connection. Um, these are songs that, well... They're calling it a guitar masterpiece. Grammy Award winning um, from Jeff Air and Hot Tuna. Marbled Gold. Yeah, that's kind of cool looking. Uh, collector's Edition One Time Pressing. Some of these they say One Time Pressing and then you see them again later, but um, many times not. So you're taking a risk. Thomas Dolby, Hyperactive. Hyperactive when I'm small. Um, <laughs> anyway, I don't know why they chose this one instead of She Blinded Me With Science, which seemed like an obvious choice, but, um, and this is a cool song. Uh, it's an interesting thing for them to reissue, and it's on transparent blue vinyl, so, um, 80s folk know what I'm talking about. Uh, Erasure's Knee EP, this is The Neon, was their recent album, and it's five tracks from the album that, or from the sessions that did not make it to the album or that were recorded right after the album was released. I'm not sure which. Rick Astley, whenever you need somebody. Well, this is the one to own, I think. I mean, if you're going to have one Rick Astley album in your collection, it's the first, it's the most popular, it's the one with uh, Never Gonna Give You Up and Together Forever also has It Would Take a Strong, Strong Man. Um, yeah, so those were all kind of big hits for him in the U.S. Um, yes, Rick was more than a one-hit wonder. People don't seem to realize that. Ultravox, this is early stuff, live. Um, it's the John Fox era, live at the Rainbow, 1977. Um, this is cool. It's, uh, I Came Back Here to Meet You, Wide Boys, Dangerous Rhythm, uh, Modern Love. Cool. Uh, it's nice to see that era get some love. Uh, La Dama Rosa, Uccides, Voltes, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to, how bad is my Italian? Maybe it's not so bad. Bruno Nicolai, um, you know, I can pronounce it. I just don't know what it means. Um, <laughs> La Dama Rosa, well, I would say that's a, a red woman, right? Uh, I think I sort of remember seeing this somewhere the translation but oh the red queen kills seven times well there you go um yeah looks like a cool soundtrack uh anytime you have like a kind of a dead doll with a implement right next to it, i guess that's a giant knife um <laughs> all right then <laughs> moving right along corinne bailey ray's the sea well this is a change of pace this was a great album, I thought, when it came out. Um, it wasn't a huge seller, because uh, really that was her debut, but uh, this is on limited blue vinyl. It's a very dreamy album, and uh, I believe this was the one that her husband had passed away, and it was sort of a reflection on that. It was a, He was very young, and it was kind of tragic 
um, sort of what happened. This was obviously pre-pandemic type stuff. So Black Label Society, uh, Zach Wild. This is uh, first time on the U.S. vinyl in 10 years. Uh, yeah, Alcohol Fueled. Oh, it's a live record. So um, here's somebody I'm not really so familiar with, I will say, Dana Gillespie. And um, the attractive young lady, Foolish Seasons, first UK vinyl release. Well, okay, so this was pressed in the UK on DECA. Um, kind of Lana Del Rey looking there. First, uh, and they would say, no, Lana Del Rey is Dan Dana Gillespie looking. First UK vinyl release for one of the great lost albums of 1960s British pop. Remastered from the original tapes, includes two unreleased songs, sleeve notes by Dana, and new artwork. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Cliff, Follow My Mind. Uh, Jimmy was much more than just sort of a reggae guy or an actor. I mean, he, he did lots of different kinds of music. Um, but yeah, this one is sort of, uh, it's got a lot of reggae type stuff on it. He does No Woman, No Cry. Um, this was from, I'm trying to remember which year, uh, 1975. So mid-70s. Um, <laughs> let's see. The Lord. Um, yeah. This has a Sun, the band Sun. I say Sun, it's not, it's like Sun, oh, 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 oh. Uh, connection, translucent blue vinyl, um, forest nocturne. People say, well, if you like slow and sludgy, that's probably your thing. Um, Chuck Prophet, Age of Miracles. This was kind of a popular record for Chuck. Um, he would say, yeah, it did pretty well. Um, it's a reissue on vinyl. Um, is there anything special about that? Originally released 2004, Master for Vinyl, Pink Marble Pressing. There you go. Uh, Karen Dalton, Shuck and Sugar. Well, she's sort of legendary in in the uh, Bob Dylan story because he really liked her. Uh, previously unreleased performance. Um, she didn't have really a ton of recordings because uh, she had so many problems and then kind of, well, she died before she could do too much. You know, it's sort of... Um, was there really that much more than like a Janis Joplin? Probably not, you know? Prodigy, Return of the Mac. This is not Prodigy techno band. This is Prodigy hip-hop dude. Uh, Prodigy of Mob Deep, right? Um, Pharaohs in the basement. Um, Pharaohs, let's see. 1971's Awakening, uh, a holy grail amongst vinyl collectors since the uh, first wave of the rare groove scene of the late 80s. Uh, 180 gram vinyl, heavy tip on jacket. Yeah, it looks, I mean, it looks very cool. I have not heard it, I will confess. I can't possibly hear everything. Who has time? The Proclaimers. How else would I get time to do these videos, right? Uh, <laughs> I would walk 500 miles. There you go. It's sunshine on lathe. Um, that's lathe. I don't have a lisp. Um, and it is actually the 2LP Expanded Edition. Um, and it has that song plus BBC Radio Sessions on marbled vinyl. You know, if you like your uh, proclaimers, get it. Stiff Little Fingers. Um, sort of hopping over to something a little more... Uh, punky, I suppose. Belfast favorite punks. Uh, BBC Live in Concert. Uh, two LPs. One is at the Paris Theatre in London. Go figure. The other is at University of East Anglia in Norwich. And uh, 81 and 82 are the years for those. Willie. Willie Nelson, Mr. Sketchers. <laughs> um, he's doing Sketchers ads now. Um, boy, he looks pretty cleaned up here. I mean, that's uh, a clean-faced Willie, right? Um, Beginnings of Outlaw Country, produced by Jerry Wexler, includes four bonus tracks. Um, yeah, this is like live stuff at the Texas Opry House. Awesome. Uh, Peppa Pig, I know some people have been waiting for that. Peppa's Adventures. Um, you know what? 
they didn't have as many of these as I wanted. I think a lot of people were trying to get this. So um, there are going to be very limited copies of that. I'm just saying. Golden Smog. Hey, get your Golden Smog here. You know, I think uh, if you're sort of into uh, the Jayhawks and stuff like that, um, this is the 30th anniversary of the debut covers EP from the Minneapolis Supergroup. Uh, members of Jayhawk Soul Asylum and the Replacements and Run Westy Run. Yeah, I sort of remember. Golden Smog had a few records. It's just so hard for a band to keep a band like that going when everybody's in another band doing other things. So, uh, Asia. This is uh, their album. This is like 30? Oh, it's a 2012 reunion. Um, yeah, it was three X's, so I guess that's 30, right? Um, it was a 2012 included Jeff Downs, Steve Howe, Carl, Par Carl Palmer, and John Wetton. Half Speed Mastered, Roger Dean artwork. I mean, great that they did Half Speed Mastered. I don't know why they put it on a picture disc then. But I will say that, you know, they really did go lighter on picture discs this year. So that's probably a good thing. Uh, Ron Sexsmith. Uh, this is a long player, late bloomer. Sex Smith is a great underrated singer-songwriter. Um, his music always sounds kind of sad no matter what he does to it. Um, but this is a limited edition green vinyl and uh, produced by Bob Rock. Uh, this album was released in 2011, I think. So who knew that the guy that worked with Metallica would be working with Ma uh, Ron Sex Smith, right? Rory Gallagher, live, San Diego, 1974. Um, Rory has become infamous in the reissue scene, and uh, his stuff's done really well. It's a live concert recording, 1974, featuring Messin' with the Kid, Hands Off, Million Miles Away, Mastered at Abbey Road. It feels really heavy and well-made. So, uh, Shankar, Family and Friends, I Am Missing You. Well, this features uh, George Harrison. If you can see him there, it's on Dark Horse Records, too, which has been sort of reinvigorated on limited blue vinyl. Um, I don't see Nora Jones in there. <laughs> I don't think Ravi was claiming her at that time. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, Alice Cooper. Uh, this, is, um, this is another late period Alice record, 2000. Um, yeah, it's called Brutal Planet. Um, I know there's some people out there looking for some of these Alice records that were harder to find. Elton John, Complete Tom Bell Sessions. So this was actually bumped to June and then bumped back to April. So this is, um, when I say complete, this was always just kind of an EP. And, um, well, it got sort of derided at the time for being a little too disco. Now you listen to it and you think, well, it kind of slots right in with the whole Philadelphia Freedom sounding stuff. And Tom Bell was kind of like one of those uh, Gamble and Huff Philadelphia kind of guys. And, um, you know, it actually has a very kind of like light, upbeat, um, string-laden sound. And um, so anyway, these are the whole, all of the recordings. So it does now include Mama Can't Buy You Love and Are You Ready for Love. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if they were on the original original only had two or three songs. This has six. Um, I say two or three. I think it had three, maybe four at the most. Um, the spinners are on it. Um, and then it's also on, it's a lavender vinyl. Okay, we're getting really uh, descriptive with the colors now, aren't we? Um, Offspring, greatest hits. So if you're kind of a casual Offspring fan, I think this is the record to get because it has Come Out and Play, Self Esteem, Pretty Fly for a White Guy, Gone Away, Why Don't You Get a Job, The kid, Kids Aren't All Right, Original Prankster. I mean, kind of has everything that's like well known. Uh, Frankie and the Witch Fingers. Um, this is a new, I think it's a new album. Oh, the self titled album from 2015. Um, yeah, so this is on Busted Guts, Green, Pink, and Bone Splatter vinyl. You can't make this stuff up, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. 
The Gun Club, live at the Hacienda, 1983. Totally underrated band. Um, it's cool that they're getting live records being released. Um, yeah, never released on vinyl until now. And it's this cool red and white kind of, I don't know, shaded sort of mixed double split color vinyl is what it says. Jeffrey Lee Pierce at his very best. Um, oh, sad story. The Cranberries remembering Dolores. Um, yeah, great pictures. Um, and this is basically songs that were picked by the band family and other collabor collaborators because of the memories that they evoke of her. And so it's a, you know, it's a collection, um, but it has Never Grow Old, um, The Rebels, Daffodil Lament, um, War Child, you know, stuff like that. And uh, finally in this video, Edgar Froze, Epsilon and Malaysian Pale. I just sort of recently discovered this album because I was reading about it and it said that David Bowie had said that uh, this was an album that he listened to a lot in Berlin in the late 70s. Um, and it kind of seems that it sort of affected his sound uh, shift during the low period when he was there. So low by, I mean the album low. Um, it's it's uh, ambient and moody, but it's also rather uh, pretty and unsettling at the same time. So anyway, uh, check that out. So that's all I have time for to show you today. Again, it's another, I'm pushing a half an hour, folks. I can't keep doing this. I got to get stuff ready. Uh, I want to make sure that you all are taken care of when you get here. And um, I think, I hope and pray it's going to be a wonderful event and day. Um, it's very scary going into these events financially when you see the amount of money that's going out and it hasn't even been collected yet. And so please remember that, you know, the record stores are putting themselves on the line to make sure that everybody has um, a good time and can get everything that they want. And so, you know, in a perfect world, I would love to see everything gone at the end of record store day and it never happens. And there's stuff that I see even now that I'm like, you know, from a year ago or whatever that is like, well, maybe someday, you know, and uh, you just sort of start feeling like, um, do people really value what you're doing? And I think that they do, but, um, you know, and I'm not saying that people need to buy things that are not good or don't, uh, don't necessarily, they don't need, but um, keep, the, keep in mind that you are supporting the independent stores, you're supporting what we're able to do, and um, I feel like this year in particular, um, I'm really starting to sense how much in the past couple of years with all this pandemic stuff that the record store really is a community of people and we share a lot and more than I think passing customers even know with each other in a way. And um, so it's a kind of an important, important part of a community if you are fortunate enough to have one in your community somewhere, much less more than one even. So um, thank you all so much for all the support that you continue to give us. I mean, I can't, I can't even put it into words and I get all emotional if I start talking about it. So um, take care of yourselves, be good, have fun. I hope you all get what you want. I hope, I mean, I try. I do, I think every record store owner generally tries, um, at least the good ones, try as much as they can to make sure that people get what they want. So, all right, I'm rambling. You're turning me off. I'll see you Saturday. Take care. And uh, I'll probably have a new release video too. So be looking for that one. All right. Thanks.